Hello. The following program is for educational purposes only. Please do not attempt to try to build anything I just show here without a professional team that is capable of dealing with high voltage and high amperage. I waive all liability for everything I'm showing here. And so we'll begin. Okay, so this is the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. And it's apparently our galaxy. It's a satellite of the Milky Way. So it says here the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy, a small satellite of the Milky Way. So, okay, so here's the Milky Way. No. I want you to notice something here. Here's the central sun. So if we count the central sun as one, and then you count the first arm, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just just something I need to point out. Now, now in the center here, we have a magnet. And around here is the conductor. And it bounces up and down. It, it spends... 12,000 years on each side. Another thing I want to point out here is, you see this here? The, you know, if you were to look at this and say this was Jupiter, doesn't that look like Jupiter's red spot? You know, just It's not a coincidence. This, this here is a cymatic pattern. Um, it's found in, um, I think, Anchor Watt. And this is a vibration. It's, it's a certain musical note. And this is a snake. I'm, I'm going to show you the whole snake here. Um, but what we got to look at here is this is the primary vibration, which would be the snake in the middle. And then this, this snake here, and this snake here would be the first octave. This would be the second octave on the there, and this would be the third octave, and, and I know there's seven here, but it, it's not seven notes, it's it's the primary vibration, first, second, and third harmonic, and the reason why I say that is because if you look at the symbols here, uh, this has got six points to it, and this one here, six points, this one's got four, and okay, like, the pedal, there's 24 pedals here, and I'm going to show you something in a minute. Now if we look up here, they're not the same, so this one start is a bit different. And then you have the primary one right here, which is the same one at the bottom. So this is a musical note, and I think it's an F sharp. Now you guys could look it up and try to determine what note it is, but that's the primary note. And here I'm going to look at some uh, Cymatic patterns. And, and you see different patterns here. And, and here we have a, an F sharp right here. Um, if you count the pedals, there's 12 pedals. And, and the number 12 is very significant with her, her time cycle and her calendar. So, you know, it has to be an F sharp note. So, you know, you try different F sharp notes and vibrate them and try to get that that primary uh, pattern on, on this thing here. Okay, so I, I want to show you a few videos like to give you better understanding of uh, how it all works because it's really the magnet in the center that's vibrating between a conductor and it's creating uh, alternating current. It's alternating current. So I'm going to show you a few videos here. And we're going to learn a little bit more about electromagnetic induction. Okay, so here we go. A current, therefore an electric field, can be produced by a changing magnetic field. And that phenomenon is called electromagnetic induction. And that phenomenon runs our economy, as you will see, in the next few lectures.
I have here a conducting wire, a square. I could have chosen any other shape. I try to make you see three-dimensionally. And I approach this conducting wire with a bar magnet. The bar magnet has a magnetic field running like so. As I approach that loop, that conducting wire, moving the bar magnet, that's essential. I can't hold it still, I have to move it. If I come down from above and I move it down, you're going to see a current going through this loop. And that current will go into such a direction that it opposes the change of the magnetic field. The magnetic field is in down direction and it is increasing as I move the bar magnet in, then this current loop will produce a magnetic field which is in this direction. And when you look from below, the current will go clockwise, producing a magnetic field in this direction. If you move the bar magnet out, then the magnetic field is going down here, then the current will reverse. The current wants to oppose the change in the magnetic field. And that's called Lenz law. It is the most human law in physics. Because there's inertia in all of us. We all fight change at some level. Lenz's law is extremely powerful in always determining in which direction these induced currents will run. It is not a quantitative law. You cannot calculate how strong the current will be. But it's very useful, as you will see today, to know the direction of that current. That gets you out of all kinds of problems with minus signs. I now want to do a demonstration which is very much like what you see here. I have here A loop, that is the square that you see there, except that it's not, not one loop, but it is many of them. Hundreds, doesn't matter. And what we're going to show you is an amp meter that is connected. So there's somewhere in this circuit an amp meter. I have a bar magnet and I'm going to approach this conducting loop with the bar magnet. And you're going to see a current running in one direction and when I pull it out, it will be running in the opposite direction. And when I hold my hand still so that the magnetic field is not changing, no current. You're going to see the current meter there. And here is my bar magnet. I come close to this conducting loop. Notice, you see a current. I pull back, current is in the other direction. Now I will go faster so that the change of the magnetic field per unit time is stronger. More current. I go out fast. More current. So you see it's the change of the magnetic field that matters. If I come in very slowly, which I do now, very slowly, you almost see nothing. Right now the entire magnetic field is inside this loop. The strongest I can have it. Nothing happens because there is no change in the magnetic field. It's only when I do this that you see the current. This would be a visual representation of basically how light goes through a Fresnel lens and it, it comes to a focal point which, you know, we, you could call it the hole or whatever, you know. But sound would do the same thing, so there's a focal point with sound, so this would be the node, wouldn't it, you know? So that's where all the heat is. And so when you look at the device, it's the, it's an hourglass, right? And that's the hottest spot. Okay, so here's the center of the box. And we know that gold gets magnetic when it gets hot. And if you use a neodymium magnet, it, uh, by the time it reaches 212 degrees, which is the boiling point of water, uh, your magnet's not going to be working. So that, this is why you have to use gold. And so the center here being gold, becoming magnetic, it becomes an electromagnet. So 
this is the magnet. That's the conductor. That's the conductor. That's the conductor. Magnet. Conductor. Magnet. Conductor. So you have the main magnet in the center between two conductors. It's bouncing up and down. And if, if some of you are wondering, you know, how, how it's done with granite. Well, granite normally is not a very good conductor. But it does become a very good conductor when you vibrate it. And I'll, I'll show you here um, a little article about granite. And, and here it says, the application of pressure and the ensuing deformation of the rock's crystals in many different types of rock, most notably granite, transform some of the oxygen atoms in those crystals into charge carriers. These atoms are positively charged because they lack an electron. So you know that the center is going to be positive. Okay, so next we're going to look at Helmholtz resonators. Okay, so here we're back to the drawings here. And we'll look at the box here. And, and even though I call it a drum box, it, it's a Helmholtz resonator because when you put the lid on it, uh, there's a hole there, and it's tuned to 90 hertz, so because it, when it gets hot, it's going to vibrate 90 hertz, because wood vibrates when it gets hot. So we're going to look at Helmholtz resonators here, and here we go. You know what it is? No. It is a Helmholtz resonator after this guy. Helmholtz resonator. The Helmholtz resonances depend on the volume of the uh, of the cavity. The volume right here is from the level of the liquid to the neck, and the and the neck the size of the neck as well. So I can change the pitch of this resonator by changing the volume. I'm gonna change the volume. Now, you can make a full instrument with different notes by having various bottles fill at different levels of wire and then play tinkle, tinkle, little star or whatever you want. <laughs> now, so you know what is this? No, it's a Helmholtz resonator. It's a Christmas ornament only during Christmas, but otherwise the rest of the year, <laughs> It's a Helmholtz resonator. Okay, so there's a demonstration of a Helmholtz resonator. I'm going to show you one in real life in India. And there you go. So this is found near Angkor Wat in Bantai Samri. And you notice there's a drain hole here because it's just like that beer bottle. Um, when it fills up with water, it's only going to keep so much water and the excess is going to drain out of here so this is a Helmholtz resonator and they found this and there was gold inside it um, like gold flake or whatever but but the parts that go inside we already know what goes inside right so um, so that gives you an idea of what this is and, and this sits under a under like there's a tower in the center of Anchor Watt and there's a shaft that goes down to the basement. In the basement sits one of these uh, stone boxes. And they vibrate. And, and it, it, it blows like a horn. And, and that sound goes to the tower. And the tower is lined with gold. And what happens is the, there's a hole at the top of the tower. And so it, it blows like a horn, you know. And, and so you have a gold tower. You have a vibrating magnetic field. And then you got the other four towers around it. They, they would be negative. The center tower would be positive, and the, the, other the other towers are negative, but only one has the hole. So one vibrates, and the other ones vibrate along with it in resonance, you know? So there was a Chinese explorer that went there, I don't think, in the, the I think in the 12th century. Um, his name was uh, Zhu Duang, and... Uh, you know, there's a lot of story going on with this that nobody knows for sure if this is, you know, actual actually related. But but there's a part when it, when he left, he was about 12 kilometers away, and 
he said he heard fireworks coming from Anchor Watt from the city, you know. And I don't think they were fireworks. I think they were electric arcs from the shot, from the towers arcing between it. And, and given the, the, the area it was in, like, it's quite jungle there and a lot of water too. So there probably a lot of mosquitoes. So I think these towers were, were you know, almost like a bug zapper, but it wasn't designed to be a bug zapper. They're, they're transmitter receivers. And they're transmitting uh, electromagnetic waves, you know. So these towers are definitely, uh, it's an example of, of society getting together and producing free energy for your people. And, and the city around Anchor Watt was about the size of Los Angeles. So this is a fine example of people getting together and producing energy for their people so that everybody can benefit. Okay, so here, as we approach the box, you're going to see there's a three-inch hole on top. And we're going to see that right now. Okay, so here. So there, there's your Humboldt resonator. There's the hole. Okay, so here, here's the little thing uh, about voltage. Now, here it says that the magnetic field is directly proportional to the voltage. Hence, if we increase the voltage of a source, then the magnetic field will also increase. So when you're vibrating, you're getting a lot of voltage from those discs, and it's going to create a magnetic field, right? So that, that's sort of how it works. And, and now we're going to look at Anchor Watt. Um, Anchor Watt is, is a bit of an anomaly because... Well, here, here's the story of Angkor Wat. It, it, it's, it was originally constructed as a Hindu temple dedicated to the god Vishnu of the Khmer Empire and King Suri, Suri, uh, <laughs> Suri II in the 12th century. And then later it was transformed into a Buddhist temple. Now, the, the strange anomaly with Angkor Wat is that... Um, Right here it says Angkor Wat is oriented to the west. And scholars are divided on as to the significance of this. So we're going to look at Angkor Wat here from Google Earth. And you can see this is lined perfectly north-south. And here we see Angkor Wat. Now, notice that it's aligned to the, to the west. And they found... Uh, there's carvings and all sorts of things around there. And there's a lot of animals that existed around 12,000 years ago. And I believe that this was built before 3002 BC. Because some, something happened in 3002 BC. In, in 3002 BC, Shiva died or whatever, you know. And I'll, I'm going to explain what that is. That, that, it's got to do with the central sun because it, it goes up and down from one side to the other. So Shiva would be um, also, oh, this is really complicated. <laughs> okay, so in, in Hindu, you know, here, here's the Lord Vishnu in the Vedic astrology. And these are all avatars, and all these avatars represent different planets. And, and there's one avatar named Kaki, is yet to come. It says here the tenth avatar, Kalki, is yet to come, but it's not part of the list. Now Kalki is the central sun in the center of the galaxy, and it's going to pop out, and it's coming for sure. So looking at Anchor Watt here, um, we're going to zoom in here. So you see it's aligned towards the west, and you know, being that this is north south, it's pretty. You know, it's the alignment. It's not quite, but it's pretty close, you know. So we're, we're going to zoom out here. Well, actually, we'll, we're going to explain. Let's zoom in for a bit. Um, so you have the towers, and apparently there's a hole up here, right right there. And so th this would be the, the center tower, which would be positive. These would be the negative towers. And you have, you know, sound. These are all gold. And, you know, gold gets magnetic when it gets hot, so... It, you have the sound coming up through the basement, making the towers vibrate. It becomes a very powerful transmitter. 
But but aside from that, we're going to look at another temple not far away where this stone box was found. And it's a bit, it's over here. I think that's it there. Uh, Bantai Kade. And this one here is really out of line. And I believe this one would have been built in modern times. And it did last. So I, I believe the, the first one, the Angkor Wat, is because it's aligned to the West, it had to be built at a time when the sun rose in the West. And that would be before 3002 BC. So if you look at this one, it's very out of line. And it, it's aligned uh, to, to the East, just like the pyramids. So anything aligned to the East would be post flood. And anything aligned to the West would be pre flood. Because the sun rose in the West at that time. And that, that's going to come again, too. I'm not sure when, but in the future. Because, like I said, it, it's all alternating current. Everything reverses. So, we're, it's going to happen. Here here we have a, a Shiva Lingam in the center here. And, and you notice it looks like a penis. And what, what does Shiva Lingam represent? If, if you look at the, the galaxy, there's a hole, you know. But on the other side is a jet. And so one side has a jet, the other side has a hole. And so what, what this represents is basically, um, it, it's also Shiva, but it, it's it's basically um, right here is Kalki. And he's going to pop out of the hole. <laughs> you know, there's no doubt in my mind that Kalki is coming and it's the central sun. And, you know, we crossed the plane in the, about 2012, so it might take 20 years. So a lot of people estimate that it, it's going to happen around between 2025 and 2032. But, you know, I, you have, I take it with a grain of salt. You, you just have to live your life and, and be happy and make the best of it. And whatever happens, happens. It's just that you can't change that. So... Um, basically, this is how it all works. So, you know, all you people, if if, if you want free energy, I, I never called it free energy in the first video, but you have to realize it's it's all vibration, and if the vibration never stops, the magnet's never going to stop bouncing. So, it defies the first law of thermo, thermodynamics. You know, the first law of ther thermodynamics says that energy cannot be created or destroyed, and it's wrong. I hate to say it. So, so anyways, you all, all you people, uh, you know, just take what you learned and, and, and try to make the most of it. And my, myself, I, I can't build it. It's just too dangerous, and I don't recommend anybody building it. Um, but, you know, you could power you know, large cities with it, and it could be made less powerful with a, you know, voltage regulator, and just making the magnet less powerful, basically, but you're still going to have voltage going through there, so that's up to people to work out the bugs, but as a power plant, it, it would work great, but you wouldn't want to be too close to it, and so I hope, I, you know, you all understand it all now, and if there's any questions, please leave them in the comments. And thank you, and good night.